Hey everyone, it's good to see you on this Tuesday, Tuesday Toots from Silver Silk and more. And this is a great opportunity for me to share with you some designs that you guys can make right at home with Silver Silk and more, of course. Uh, I love working and partnering with other companies like Softflex Wire, Jesse James Beads, Vintage, Tierra Cast. They've all been wonderful um, to work with and their products are just top notch everything. It's so wonderful and such a compliment to Silver Silk. Hey, Julie. Some folks are already tuning in. Uh, tonight's a special episode just because I had this sort of epiphany of, you know, in last week thinking, okay, my, you know, Atlantis tour has just ended and now I'm back to just doing random, <laughs> random classes here. But something I really wanted to focus on for myself was to make more stuff for me and I've just not been doing that. And so I was piddling yesterday because I had some time to myself and um, started to kind of just put stuff together. And I was like, whoa, you know, I could actually turn this into a how-to tutorial. I know several of us are probably just looking for additional designs to give um, as gifts to the men in our lives or whoever. And um, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to put together a quick little show um, but I'm going to do a design sprint, so I'm not going to sketch anything, but I'm just going to create as much as I can, a lot of designs for the dudes and for the ladies, um, all of us can wear it. And I wanted to focus on a specific product from Southlux Wire that I'm featuring, which is these, um, antler beads here, elk antlers, which are really cool. Uh, by the way, no antlers um, or no elks were hurt in the process of acquiring these antlers. So um, they keep it, they keep it very clean. <laughs> but I just thought these were so cool. I've used them before, but I never got to really explore them. So I am going to make a bunch of designs um, uh, tonight, which I'm a little bit nervous about, but we're going to do it together. So it'll be great. Hey, Susie and Sue is here. So I'm going to flip this camera around. And we're just gonna go ahead and just dive right in. I did do prep work on one of my designs, which is this bracelet that I'm about to bring out. I was starting on this last night. So let me, um, and that's when I had my epiphany, let me go over some of the materials that I'm using. So I got this cuff, it's a copper cuff from Halstead. And I've had it in my inventory for about four years, I think. And I kept it in my personal stash just because I loved it so much. And um, I was like, you know what? I need to do something with it because this is, this is getting nuts. So I paired it with Hematite Capture Chain, which if you're not familiar with what Capture Chain is, it's a knitted wire jewelry uh, chain. This is a chain knit that's made with six different needles that work together to create a machine knit over a ball chain. And um, you can cut it, you can string on it, you could sew with it, which is what I'm doing with wire. Very cool stuff, I highly recommend checking it out. This is gonna make an excellent design for a, per, a, a guy in your life or a lady with a very um, eclectic rustic style, I think is sort of what I'm going for here. But you know what, I thought this antler would work really well on it. And so what I did was, I put a little terminator. These are silver silk four millimeter terminators is what they're called. And they also look like this when they're not crimped. Um, but it's got a, a special set of teeth inside of it so that whenever you crimp it over your ball chain of the capture chain, um, it holds in place and it won't come out and it's super secure. And you could see it tidies up that end very well. So all I did was just wrap some 26 or you can use 28 gauge wire. Um, this is a very dark wire from Softflex. And all I did was just wrap it around the base of the cuff here a couple times. And then I started to sew right through the capture chain with some seed beads. Very easy to do. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate on the other side, but I did wanna meet up here in the middle because I wanna show you how to put your antler bead on in case you end up grabbing one. And you can get these from softflexcompany.com and just search for antler beads um, is what I did. And they'll pop up. But I'm just gonna string both of these on and I'm gonna lay this one flat right on the cuff. Look how cool that looks already. It's just gonna be a really dynamite 
piece that I'm going to end up wearing with a lot of other jewelry pieces. I think it'll stack really well. So what I'm going to do is just bring my wire around the cuff. And I am going to go ahead and pick up my seed beads. So you can see it's already secured just with that one wire wrap loop on it. Um, but I had some copper beads. Again, this was just stuff in my stash. It's a design and D stash uh, kind of a play day today. And when you string on your seed bead, you can go directly into the capture chain and stitch back around. It's so easy. Again, this is 28. This is 26 gauge wire, but you can absolutely use 28. Um, it makes it very much like sewing thread, I think, um, in the way that it works. But minus all of the needle and other stuff that comes with it. <laughs> so I got my seed bead on the one side, as you can see, right there. And what I'm gonna do is put another seed bead in, string that right on to my 26 gauge wire, and then wrap back around. Now you can space these out however you like. Um, I'm by nature a minimalist. So I gave myself a pretty decent gap between each of my wraps and seed beads and it still ended up to be a very nice clean design. So I'm gonna do this a few more times before moving on to the next design, just to show you guys how easy this is. And the real beauty of this capture chain, again, this is in the uh, hematite, which is a gunmetal ball chain um, with a hematite colored knitted sleeve over it. Really good. I, I love, love this chain so much. It looks like chain mail that's very delicate. Um, I, I think it retains that sort of hard edge and um, masculine feel, even though it's got the beautiful woven knits within it. So I would definitely wear this. And especially now that I've figured out a way to accessorize it with um, some antler beads. <laughs> okay. So as you can see, it wraps very easily. And because I'm giving myself enough space between my wraps, it's going quite quickly too. So just something else to think about as you're doing this, if you decide to do this. I hope you do decide to do this. Really, this technique can work with any cuff, too. I think the only thing to note here is just making sure that the seed beads stay in place as you're wrapping. Once you're done wrapping, they do tend to stay in place, but I think it's that work progress that makes it misalign as you're working with it. Yes, I see some of my Softflex friends are on. Kristen, um, to answer your question, yes, I'm using beads tonight um, for all of my projects, actually. The antler, beautiful antler beads that are on the Softflex company webpage. I'm hoping that you can um, post a link for our friends here. That way, they, if they are interested, they can grab it from there where I did. But, oh my gosh, like, look how easy that just is gonna come together. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on this only because we've got six other designs <laughs> to make. Um, so I'm gonna switch to something else that uses the antler beads. Um, okay, so I'm gonna finish this off camera later. All right, our second design. I am continuing the hematite capture chain trend. I've got a bunch of this in stock, so it's also good that I'm trying to use it up today. And you know what, I started to mess around. I was like, okay, I could string it through because it's got a nice giant hole, or I could treat it as a pendant somehow, but what are some other ways um, to do this? And so I was like, you know what, maybe if I um, take some of the components that I have, this double strand end cap in antique gold, you can then put both of these right into there. And then we're gonna do some wire wrap action to this to kind of get it more centered, which I think will be a really cool look for this. And then we can also, once we're done with our wrapping, hang a little dagger right off of it. Just again, for a really cool rustic look. And I actually have some, uh, I think this is 
much thicker 20 gauge wire um, that we're gonna work with. So to do this, the first step I wanna do is gather up my ends. And I think this is probably big enough to put over my head, but it might not be for everybody. Um, this is probably about 20 inches or so of chain, but um, I can always go back in and cut it at the end later and add some single strand end caps um, whenever I'm finished with the design, in case it doesn't fit over my head. <laughs> I haven't really measured to see, uh, but that's okay. These are all details for later. Let's just, let's just focus on the main part here. I am placing both strands into the double strand end cap. And I want it to go in as much as possible. Sometimes those little ends prevent it from going completely in. So I just give like a nice little pinch um, there at the top as I'm placing it in. And it should fit in quite well after that. Then what I'm gonna do is grab my, <clears throat> my lunge up pliers and give it a good squeeze. Just like that. Okay, so now I wanna wire up my um, antler bead. To do this, um, I haven't actually done this before, so this is gonna be very interesting, but I did have it in my head, um, the general concept. I'm actually just taking 20 gauge wire. This is a dark um, steel annealed wire, but I know Softflix also carries a dark gunmetal color to complement um, the chain that I'm using. So I would definitely hit them up for that. I am gonna grab my chain nose pliers and I'm gonna go straight up, just like that. I want my wire wrap to, just to be around the center to make it look, to give that illusion that it's just floating there, but I do need to secure it in place, at least on the top. And so that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so I folded my other wire around and I'm just going to go ahead and wrap it once around just like that. If it's off center, that's okay, no big deal. Um, I'm just gonna continue going and once we get our wrapping kind of figured out here, then I can go back in and um, compensate during that loop making at the top there to make sure that it is centered. But I'm gonna go around once, maybe a couple times. And then what I'm gonna do is make a loop here at the bottom because I want my dagger here to dangle off um, from a loop there. So what I'm gonna do is just create a nice hard bend there at the bottom of my pendant. And what I'm gonna do is grab my round nose pliers and I am going to create a simple loop. Well, it'll, I guess, be more or less a wire wrap loop by the time I'm done, but just a nice little loop there at the bottom, just like that. So now what I can do is continue to wrap this wire around, really giving it that cool rustic feel. You can wrap it as many or as few times as you want. Give yourself Plenty of wrapping if you really want to make a bold statement here, which I think for a smaller piece, that's not a bad idea. Uh, let's see, I might have just enough wire to end it there. And actually what I'm going to do is tuck this end piece in. If you are uncomfortable with doing that, you could absolutely just wrap it around um, the top there and then just end it that way, but either way works. I really like the look of that though. That's, that's really cool. I could have connected that, I suppose, um, from the get-go. I didn't even think about that, but that's okay. That's what jump rings are for. <laughs> okay, so now I just need to make my loop there at the top. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm probably gonna make a messy loop just for fun. You see, oops, how I um, kind of compensated. It's off center on this side, but I'm gonna push my loop this way. And then the messy loop wrapping is gonna actually just cover it right up. So it should be all 
good. So you can go back through and adjust everything that you need to and kind of get this wrap nice and tucked in. I ended up using up all of my wire, which is pretty good. There we go. Cool. So I think what I want to do is make my loop face out just because I can make that ring jump ring attach a little bit easier, just like that. Oh, I love it. It's such a characteristic, fun way to display, I need some jump rings, um, that antler bead. Let me grab some of these real quick, some jump rings. Ooh, find a wine bottle or wine glass charm to hang from the end. That is a good idea. That would be really fun. Okay. Um, I'm just grab some antique copper, or excuse me, antique gold jump rings from my stash of silver silk stuff. And I'm just gonna connect it all together. Ooh. Super easy. So we've already got two designs put together. Well, really like one whole one because I need to finish the other one off camera. Uh, but it'll happen. It's all good stuff. Easy peasy, you guys. Like that was, that's just a quick, I'm probably, I'm sorry, I didn't have that on camera. Um, I'm probably gonna wear this out tonight, in fact, with my crazy shirt to, uh, that I'm wearing today. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna hang this one to the side and we're gonna get to our next project which is, um, actually, I wanted to use this flat mesh to make a really simple design. But using that and some, I got some antique um, gold, no, what is this? Vintage bronze wire that I think I'm gonna wrap the sides of it and just do a simpler chain with this beautiful olive green flat mesh. This is another one in the silver silk line that uses eight needles and a flattening process to make this ribbon. Very cool stuff. It's super flexible, as you can see. Um, you can absolutely just cut it without it fraying. It's gonna have a little bit of wire sticking out, but do not be alarmed, that's not going to fray. So that's pretty magical stuff. <laughs> M asks, what is that edible thing that you sent in our order? Well, guys, I've been sneaking you all um, some espresso beans, so feel free to munch on them if you like, and if you don't, um, hopefully you can give it to someone who does love espresso beans, but they are some good stuff. They're made with um, dark chocolate and white chocolate, and so good that I had to share with everybody. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut out a bunch of, Let's see, I'm using, uh, I'm using Parawire for this one since I had the color handy. 22 gauge in vintage bronze with my antler. Okay, and then I'm just gonna string the antler right on. Now that hole is rather large. Um, so I'm thinking, I probably don't need, I think I can get away with it. I was thinking that if I put a disc bead on either side, but at the moment, I don't really happen to have one, but that's okay. I can make a giant loop that will prevent it from going anywhere. <laughs> there we go. And I'm just gonna go string that right back on. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of space. If, it's, if it moves around, that's, that's perfectly okay. I want a little bit of movement with this anyway, since we're going for something that's a bit more organic and uh, characteristic. I'll close it up just a smidge there though. There we go. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm setting myself up to wire wrap 
on both sides as I've done here. And again, it's okay if it isn't perfect, not a big deal, that's all gonna be wire wrap. So I'm just gonna grab my chain nose pliers and make sure that they're out of the way. And then I'm just gonna let the wire really just work its magic and create some large, oops, hitting the camera there with my wrapping. Large uh, voluminous wraps here that will sort of eat up the one side of the wire and the other as well. There, you see how just like nice and organic and loose that looks? Like that's what we're going for here. So once we get to the end, I'm actually just gonna fold that little end right in so it doesn't poke or stick out or anything like that. And we do the same thing to the other side. Now that hole gives me an opportunity to um, put in a jump ring and attach it to my ribbon mesh here in a second. Okay. Here we go. See, that space is now eaten up with the wire, and I've got uh, some. I've got basically a pendant that just that's just gonna look so nice together. So okay, to use these, um, you need or to crimp this, I guess, <laughs> you need a um, set of these flat mesh crimps from Silver Silk. They look like this. They are tiny, about four millimeters across and four millimeters um, tall. And you just basically put in your ribbon, stick it into your nylon drop pliers and give a good press. Now this will basically grip, the little teeth will grip on that mesh ribbon and it's not gonna come out. Perfectly secure. And I do wanna measure this according to and it looks like I wanted this to be a tighter design around my neck. So I'm just going to actually measure out this much, um, which is probably close to nine inches on both sides. So let me go ahead and crimp this. Very easy to do. Again, you just stick it right in. You don't need any special tools other than nylon jaw pliers. Um, and you don't need glue to make this work. Just crimps right shut very quickly. Okay. We can take those out of the way. And then I'm gonna crimp my ends here and then attach everything with some jump rings. Ooh. Didn't get a good grip on there. I'm trying to read some of these comments at the same time. <laughs> and replied, thought it was just a solid coffee bean. <laughs> nope, it's got some chocolate in it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not getting my concentration here that I normally have, but that's all right. Okay, since the other one flew away, we're just gonna connect these at the bottom. <laughs> I'll probably pick it up later before, um, before my little robot vacuum does its thing. We would not want that finding to get lost. Okay, so the last part of this is just really attaching your clasp and your um, mesh to the pendant. Just like that. Very easy to do. You could. Absolutely add any additional beads and stuff. Um, for me, that wouldn't quite work, but some of you, again, would like to venture out and try this, definitely give it a go. But isn't that just great? It's so easy and quick and fun. And I'm sure everyone has scrap wire and maybe even some scrap silver silk at home that they can use. So do grab the flat mesh crimps 
and um, the olive chain if you happen to coordinate with this. So another necklace done. Um, I'm gonna hang that on my little dress form here, my neck. And I'm gonna start on another design. Let's see, okay. I have got something non-silver silk, actually. I love this little guy. This came from a friend. Her name's Bethany, and she had some really kooky and unusual pendants, and was asking if anyone wanted to purchase any from her, and I swiped this one up. <laughs> it's just so cool. So characteristic, I think. So I thought, you know what? I think I'm just gonna stick that on some ball chain. I could absolutely do that with the um, with this chain, with the hematite capture chain, but I think I'm already gonna wear, and I see these kind of layered together whenever I'm wearing them, sort of what Candy Cooper does with her designs and her ensemble is to multi-layer these, and I definitely don't wanna compete, um, have any competition between what I'm wearing, but rather compliment. And I know this ball chain is of course used within the capture chain. So this is a good way to kind of highlight and make your um, accessories pop a, in a different way. So I'm just gonna keep this one simple and I'm going to just take about three foot of the ball chain and I'm going to use the silver silk end caps. This is a double strand. Again, and this is just to get myself a no, um, a no clasp necklace. Stick those both in. Grab your nylon drop pliers. Hit again. Making sure that they're both in there. And these tend to be a little bit temperamental just because <laughs> sometimes my nylon jaw pliers want to hold and sometimes they don't. By the way, this is a two millimeter chain, um, of the ball chain. And that's what's going to hold inside here once I get it crimped. There we go, had the one side crimped but not this side. It's a little awkward for me to hold right now, but I don't know why. There we go. Okay, got that. So now what I wanna do is wire wrap this little guy. I don't wanna do too much to him just because it looks great the way that it does already. And so what I'm thinking is I can grab some more of that dark wire. I wanna go ahead and take it off this thing though. There we go. And just use the beads by themselves. I'm sure we all have that one pendant that is in our stash that's just like, what do we do with this? And I believe it or not, I've hung around with, or uh, have this pendant for, I don't know, probably two or three years now, just not knowing what to do with it. Um, this was a really good opportunity since I'm layering all of these designs together uh, to make it work for that. And it's all about de-stashing some of this stuff too, right? Okay. So I think I'm just going to keep this one pretty simple and I'm going to just do a quick little loop here at the top. I'm just using... Um, what is this, 20 gauge wire. Before I wire wrap my loop, I do want to stick in my silver silk end cap there. And just wrap it a couple times. That's pretty much it. And I'm just gonna trim this off. Trim and tuck. I actually do have more antler designs on the way um, after I finish this one up, but I really wanted to do something with this guy. Now, 
the question is, is I guess I could put a loop here at the bottom. I can definitely tell you I'm not going to be putting a tassel on it. <laughs> um, but I could probably put like a little dagger or bead or something as a little accent piece later on. Um, you know what I should have done was the handy dandy trick that Sarah Ellis has for um, creating a quick little, I guess, head pin out of the wire. I don't know <clears throat> necessarily if I could do it with this gauge because it's so thick. I think I've got a thinner one here that I could give, definitely give it a try. I didn't think through that one, um, so that's my fault. But as we're sprinting on our design, we just kind of have to go with the flow, right? So I believe what she did was that she created just a couple rings here at the bottom, like that, and then takes one end in and pushes it through that loop. Pretty easy to do. Again, this wire is not of soft flex, so it's probably not going to be as smooth. Oh, there we go, not bad, not bad. And it's okay if it's a little rustic. It goes with the whole theme for today. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna switch wires now that I'm doing it correctly. But uh, I like the way that that ends on there. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm not gonna be putting a tassel on these designs. Yeah, I love the head pin trick. It's so convenient for some of these bigger pendants and, um, you know, just a nice finishing touch. Okay, so it looks like everything is back. So I'm just gonna do a quick little wire wrap loop here at the top. right off. Stick it on the side. Pitch it back down and just complete the loop. Very easy. I like easy today. Another one that I could just wear right out the door. So I really like how these end caps finish off chains. I mean, it works with the ball chain, we know that. I'm wondering what other chains it works with though. I don't know if you all have experimented with that much at all or not. Um, but <laughs> look how fun that looks. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so I'm going to set this one aside because that's what, four piece, three pieces done? Three or four? I don't know, I lost count. So many, we're creating a lot here. Okay, next design. I'm going to be using 20, back to 20 gauge um, dark wire. I'm gonna move some of these things out of the way though, because so it's a bit of a low There we go. Okay, and I thought, um, since I've got more of these, I was inspired by another designer named Deb, and she had this really great piece that used beads in the center. They were red colored beads, and then I think a chain um, as a necklace rope, just like normal jewelry chain. But the beads were sort of stacked side by side together, and then there was something hanging off of it. So you know what? I thought I could try and emulate the same thing, but with my own findings. So, whoops, maybe I should scoot this up a little bit. Oh, there we go. Um, so I'm going to kind of work this in this fashion. I'm not sure how long I need this to be at this point. Um, I'm probably gonna give myself, I would say this would be a great as a mid-length necklace. So we're looking at probably close to 24 inches of chain. Something that you can kind of throw over your head um, would be pretty good. So 
Very bulky here at the bottom, but I think this shape and emphasis on the antlers will give it a really cool contemporary finish and style. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trim that right off. I'm using a triple strand end cap. If I use the double, it would be a little bit more concise, but I like how long this is in um, juxtaposed with the size of those um, antler beads. So I think it'll make a really cool combination. So I'm gonna go ahead and string those in. Ah, Suzanne D. Ward says, I've used cup chain with the silver silk caps. Yes, I totally forgot about cup chain. A great way to use the end caps for sure. Um, I believe I've done that too and it was super convenient to use it for cup chain. Okay, so I am just giving a good squish there. String those in right through. Okay, so the first part is attached. Now we gotta figure out what to do with this. Well, I'm gonna take my 20 gauge wire and I'm just gonna kinda eyeball because I wanna do a straight line down here and then have it kind of go up um, directly through those antler beads. So again, keeping my lines nice and clean is I think gonna be the key for me for this one. So maybe there in here. And I just use um, chain nose pliers to do that. So it gives me a good setup for a frame, as you can see. So now I'm just gonna string each of these through. And by the way, my um, chevron here at the bottom is from Tierra Cast just in case you were wondering. So that's a little bit too wide. Um, I don't think I wanna go quite that wide, so I'm just gonna take out the one side and straighten it back out. If it's not perfectly straight, it's okay. Um, it's gonna be tucked away inside of my antler bead anyway. So I pushed them a little closer together and now I can string it through. I still should have plenty of space for my little um, art element there at the bottom. Okay, so there we go. Now what I have to do is meet both of these wires in the middle and just probably do a simple loop. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and bend it where it crosses is where I want to flip one of my wires up towards the middle. So there we go. Just like that. So as you can see, it kind of resembles a coat hanger, but not really. <laughs> and I'm going to wrap the other wire right around the center of that. So to do this, I think what I'm going to do is actually grab this with a pair of, a bigger pair of chain those pliers to give myself a better grip. Actually, there's not gonna be an easier way to do this. Okay, never mind. I think I can do this with my hand. There we go. Whew. You never know how things are gonna turn out if <laughs> you just use the wrong tool the wrong way or something. So, but my hand did the trick. So, just gonna wrap it around once actually, maybe twice. There we go. And I can just trim the rest off because that looks nice and clean going with that contemporary theme again for me. Contemporary but rustic, is that a thing? I don't know. I guess it just depends on how you look at it. I like clean lines with all of the materials that I'm using personally. So I'm just gonna create a nice little simple loop here at the top. I'm just gonna give myself a nice little bend there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and trim my loop, or the wire for my loop, um, maybe about a half inch there. And I'm gonna insert it into my round nose pliers and then start to turn. If I get a straight edge on my loop, I can simply trim that off and then continue to 
reinsert it back into my pliers and then continue to work it around. Just like that. Very easy to do. Now it's facing up, but I want my loop to face down instead because that's how it's going to connect to my silver silk finding. And boom, there we go. So now I need to figure out a way to connect that to my loop there, or to the end part of my wire. And I'm thinking that I can use, I don't wanna use these, I wanna use my silver colored jump rings. So let me grab those real quick, just to keep it consistent. Now we'll just connect everything together. I really like these components from TierraCast. They really do a great job on producing different styles and finishes. And I can't exactly remember which, um, which collection this particular component came from, but I remember them having a bunch of geometric ones within it. So I thought they did a really good job. And I've had them forever. So <laughs> again, going with the D stash theme here. Excellent. There we go. Very easy and fun and cool. So I really like this piece and I can definitely see myself wearing that actually. So I'm gonna hang that to the side and onto another one. Um, this one, I thought, you know, I could just do some stringing with some beads here that I have. I found these matte check glass in a trade show, a bead show somewhere, and fell in love with them. And I got a bunch of them. And so, and of course they just, I didn't do anything with them until today. So I thought, you know what? Let's just do something simple, carrying on this simple theme here, and uh, maybe just do some stringing on some soft flex wire. What I love about the antler beads is that they go right through the check glass there. And I believe this is four millimeter beads um, in rondelles. And so really easy to use. Hey, Carol, it's good to see you. Okay, what are we creating today? That's a good question. We created five, I think, menswear and, and or ladies wear design. Um, I definitely don't wanna not call myself non-binary, I guess. Um, my non-binary <laughs> designs. <laughs> I'm all for diversity, you guys, you know that. But um, pieces that I would wear, more or less. I'm focusing on things that I wanna wear for today's show. And I had a bunch of beautiful antler beads from Softflex Company that I really badly wanted to use for something for myself. And I, you know what? I just made an entire show out of it. It was fabulous. Okay, this should be fairly easy because they're already strung on something here, which makes life easier. So what I'm gonna do is just basically transpose these beads from one wire to the other. Um, but I, as I was ranting about what we're making today, I didn't even talk about how awesome this beading wire is. I'm using Softflex medium stringing wire, bead stringing wire. This is non-colored. This one's just their standard, um, kind of a silver color. And I am in love with it. The medium size is perfect for this type of stringing. The, it can hold really massive beads, in fact, that have a lot of weight all the way to delicate um, stringing or you know something of what I'm doing here. And super, super flexible. It, um, it's got a coating on it so it doesn't tarnish. And whenever you crimp it, you know it's gonna be secure because that nylon coating on the wire is pretty thick. Um, so it's gonna hold on that crimp really well. And I think if you're really into jewelry making that is going to last a long time and be as superior quality as you can get it to be, you definitely want to keep an eye on what materials and brands you're using 
just to um, make sure that you're using top quality products. Something that's actually very important for me, and I know I, I take the extra time and effort to make sure that Silver Silk maintains that integrity and also the brands that I choose to work with um, have the same principles in their products as well. Uh, thanks, Kristen, for um, posting that link as well as giving some additional information. I always forget to cover all the little details, I think, as I'm ranting about how much I love using it. Okay, so not too exciting here, I realize, because I'm just stringing um, from one to the other, but I appreciate you guys hanging on to me unveiling the all the collection that I did tonight. Yeah, I love how large that hole is. It's, it's so good. Okay, so I'm actually wondering if I can just do this. And I can, so that's awesome. I just lined up my two wires and it will just string one from the other. Very easy. Or I got lucky that the holes were big enough for me to do that. <laughs> Sometimes it's uh, a little tedious. I know seed beads can be that way for sure. Now, as I'm stringing this, I'm kind of deciding on what size I want this to be because I've made a lot of longer necklaces just a second ago, and um, for, and I've made a couple of smaller ones. So I'm kind of thinking this should be probably a good medium-sized one. And again, I'm thinking about like layering several of these necklaces together. I probably wouldn't want to wear just one because why would you do that? <laughs> the more the merrier, right? I made I managed to make one bracelet too is also the other thing that I was thinking. I'm not really a big bracelet wearer um, personally. I think from because I'm working with my hands so much that it almost gets for me a little bit irritating. But I I love necklaces, um, and I will definitely wear those all the time if I can. At the moment, I didn't have any until today um, that I really liked. Okay, so I just need to string on a bit more on each side, whoops. But this sort of warmer gray check glass color and the combination of the antler, which to me just gives a very light, airy color palette here, works really well together. So what I'm gonna do is crimp one side, followed by the other after I strung it. So that way my beads don't come out because that's the last thing that I really need today. <laughs> okay, I am gonna crimp this. So to do this, I just picked up a two millimeter crimp from Softflex Wire. Again, following the trend of using quality products, I am actually just gonna grab my magical crimpers here. Fancy tool from Softflex Wire. Um, but you stick it in the one notch, it becomes a square shape with pressed edges, and then you just basically go around and around, and it compresses that crimp into a little bead, making it aesthetically pleasing 
to look at, but also gives it um, a lot of security and just closes and grasps right onto that nylon coating. And then what you can do is you could either trim it there, but I think I'm gonna pass it through a bead and then trim it off. Yes, I do. I actually do have some bead stoppers. I just didn't think about putting them out. <laughs> I think it's my laziness kicking in. But yeah, you're absolutely right, um, Susie. I think some bead stoppers would have helped for that very reason. Okay, a little bit more to go, you guys. Super easy stuff today, though. I mean, how many pieces that I make, and I don't know if we've hit an hour yet in our video. Um, and I think between, if I didn't probably talk as much, I'm sure I would have gotten even more done, but then what would be the fun of it, right? <laughs> it was an angry Peter for an angry bead stopper. <laughs> I like that. I really, I am in love with matte, matte um, check glass. I don't know if you all like it or not as much as I do. It, to me, it just looks sometimes more expensive than the glossier check glass that's out there because I guess it kind of resembles stone that's been precisely cut is the vibe that I get from it. I don't know, that's just me. Of course I like sparkly things too though. Don't get me wrong. managed to use up one and a half strands maybe two strands of this and I have like 17 more that I purchased not knowing what I'd actually do with it but I just really liked it that much <laughs> and they were fairly priced too so why not stock up and I know I'm not the only one here that likes to hoard beads <laughs> Oh, Carol, I'm glad you got some good ideas um, from the show. I think the techniques that I used today, certainly you could use um, for probably almost any kind of beads. Okay, so stringing on my second crimp and my jump ring. I'm gonna go down through the crimp, of course, and one of my beads like I did earlier, and then I'm just gonna pull it tight from there. What I want is to pull it tight to where it is secure, but not too tight to where it is causing my necklace to not flex correctly. So as you can see, it's right now really great. Um, I'm not seeing any major gaps between my beads, and so that's where I wanted to keep it. And it looks really good right now around my jump ring. So going back to my magical crimpers, the trick with these is that you really do have to like make sure that it's super inside of that notch. And if it's just off a little bit, it does kind of color the way that your crimp will look at the end. But you get that first one right and then the rest is just great. So that looks really good to me. I like it. All right, so now I just need a clasp, but I don't have one on hand. Um, surprise, surprise. I feel like that's always the one thing that I always forget to do. Maybe that's why I subconsciously like no clasp necklaces. So I'm just gonna cut those together for now, but just again, easy stringing. Um, but 
focusing on materials that make sense. So let me flip this camera around real quick. And what I'm gonna do is show you guys what we made. So I have put together a quick little collection of all of the designs <laughs> that we made, which I'm pretty impressed with actually. You know, we started off with, um, actually I don't remember where we started. But you can kind of see, like, I love this one a lot. There we go. And I think, again, they work so well together. Oh, sorry, I was trying to dig this one out. There we go. Perfect, okay. So we did some wire wrapping around the antler bead and just gave it a cool rustic feel. We connected our little fish pendant to um, this great bead chain with a silver silk end cap and um, made a quirky little pendant. Then we made this awesome giant piece with a tiara cast pendant um, or ge uh, geometry shape there at the end of that little charm. Connected it to a silver silk uh, triple strand end cap. And now we've just got a really nice long weighted piece there. I threw in a little brass chain just to kind of break this design aesthetic up, but these just layer so well together and it just creates a really cool look. Um, we also, ah, I remember what we made. I need to finish this one up, but check out this bracelet, you guys. Like, that is gonna stack well with some other bracelets I think that I've got that are simpler chain, but just something to give, you know, a new little pop um, to any bead. And that one's an easy one to do. Um, we also made this little guy, which we just wire wrapped around the antler bead there, as you could see, and then attached all of our stuff at the end. So I didn't have a clasp for this one either, so I'm gonna work on that too. <laughs> Lots of designs, you guys, um, but I know you can do this too, because I just did it in a very short amount of time. Um, so do replay, rewatch all of the stuff that I did to check out the techniques and try and um, practice doing that uh, for yourself. You can grab all of the goods that I used except for the antler beads, which I'll talk about those in a second. Um, but the silver silk chain, uh, the different chains I used and the different findings from silversilkonline.com. You can grab those beautiful antler beads um, from softflexcompany.com. And in there, you could just search for elk antlers or antler beads even, and then Kristen posted it on tonight's comments feed. So do check that out. And then where else? I'm on social media everywhere. Um, Instagram, please follow me on there. Please follow me on and subscribe on YouTube if you like these tutorials. Um, I'm always posting these videos to YouTube, so in case you wanna catch it later, you could absolutely find it there too. And then I've got a blog on my website, which I'm keeping up to date, so you can find the tutorials on there too. I will photograph the all of this <laughs> at some point and post it all online on the Silver Silk Silkies Facebook group page. And until next time, you guys, I will see you. Please be creative, please be safe, and um, I will definitely talk to you and see you on social media. Bye. Mm-hmm.